This is, uh, I'm going to call it electrical confusion part two. You can take a look at part one. I'll put the link in the description. In part one, I installed this ACR. Uh, turns out I had a faulty alternator, and that was the root cause of my problem. Even though I metered it and tested it with the engine running and it was outputting voltage and there's significant voltage drop back to the batteries due to the long winding run that the alternator line takes up to the flybridge, down to the lower helm, lower helm to the fuse panel, selector switch, fuse panel, back to the two battery banks. Uh, what was happening is after a few minutes of engine time, like I think 20, 30 minutes, the alternator would, uh, its voltage would drop off to the point of not outputting at all. Uh, so ACR wasn't working even um, with the shorter run and heavier gauges because bad alternator. Um, the moderator, one of the moderators on the CHB forum on the Yahoo group uh, was nice enough to send me his uh, old spare alternator from Washington State um, free of charge. Just paid for shipping. Thank you so much. Uh, that solved that problem. And I'm going to get my old one rebuilt at some point. So today I'm going to remove the ACR. That'll clean this up a bit. I've already got one side uh, removed. Next, uh, in a previous project, I installed a uh, Blue Sea terminal uh, fuse block and neglected to order the fuses. So I have since picked up some 250 amp fuses and I read up that the uh, fuse rating is not based on load, but based on the gauge of the cable that it's servicing. So I've got a uh, one aught cable on the house bank that runs directly to the windlass. Uh, this is um, breakered, but uh, that is uh, about halfway through the run up to the bow. Um, so I'll throw the 250 amp fuse in to carry this um, one aught run. And then I've got this lighter run. This goes back to the panel. I don't know the gauge of this. It looks like it's pretty faded. I can't read it. I'll have to uh, put a caliper on it and measure it. But um, I've got that. That needs to be fused with a smaller fuse. And then this was, uh, this is a mess. This goes to the aft head. It's an electric head. I hope this is fused somewhere in line. Uh, it doesn't go to the breaker panel. It's a direct run. Um, so I'll trace that and um, make sure it's fused. And if not, even if it is fused, I'm thinking I'd rather have this um, at a distribution block down here in the engine room where I have individual fuses for each each run that uh, comes off the bank. Um, I installed this one myself. This goes to the uh, the fridge, which is up here. It's a Norcold. It's new, 2015, I think I put it in. Uh, okay, so the issue there is there is a breaker on the panel for the refrigerator, 12 volt DC, that runs uh, through the uh, the decks. I can't get to the line. It comes out in an outlet behind those drawers. Uh, you patch off the outlet to the fridge. Um, it's like a two and a half or more voltage drop. And this fridge is very unhappy when it gets below 12 volts. So even with the bank fully charged, uh, the fridge cycles on and off and it is just in like a low voltage condition. So uh, I, to solve that, j I just ran a new, um, I forget if this is 12 or 14 gauge line with an inline fuse. This is like a mm, four foot run. And then I actually just fished the, fr the fridge cord down the, um, through the deck, so it's right here. You know what, this is more like two and a half feet, maybe th ah, three foot, let's call it a three foot run. So much shorter run, no m noticeable voltage drop now. That solved it, but I have another fuse directly tied in. So thinking all of this, I should put a terminal block in somewhere, maybe on this bulkhead and fuse each thing individually. But for today, 250 amp fuse for the windlass. And I am going to do the same for the engine start bank. Uh, I'm going to fuse 250 amp fuse, the one aught cable that services the starter motor. From what I understand, fusing the starter is optional. And the risk is I may blow the fuse if I have uh, extended cranking or uh, some other cold start condition. 
But uh, I'll take a chance. Um, if I got to get the engine started quick and the fuse blows, um, the delay will be just jumping from this side of the block to here with the jumper cable, which I carry in the engine room. So it probably cost me about 60 seconds if I uh, have a no start condition from a blown fuse. Next, this is a temperature sender for the battery charger. I never installed it, so I will add that to the house bank since this is the bank that cycles the most frequently. Fuse is installed. It's a little tall, but the cover still uh, conceals it for the most part. Uh, I definitely want to put in a, um, a bus with a bunch of fuses for each of these items. This is a I don't like this at all. Remove the ACR and associated cabling. Once I started disconnecting wires, I discovered the windlass line doesn't actually go to the house bank. It travels up and over through this uh, on off switch to the engine start bank. So I went ahead and installed the 250 amp fuse on this side as well. That's feeding the windlass as well as the engine start. The windlass has a breaker, push button breaker. It's 150 amps. And then this fuse is 250. So if uh, the, the breaker will pop before the fuse, which is good. Installed the temperature cable for the battery charger on the negative terminal of the house bank. Next, I'm going to start the main and just confirm that it doesn't blow the, the fuse. Perfect. Done.